Now, we've talked about the history of genetics. We talked about Mendel and his work. We talked about the basic mechanics of how genetics works. But all of that is just introduction to the actual meat of it, which is what Mendel actually did to figure out how this all works and how you can do the same to figure out or predict what would happen in any given cross between any two dif different traits. And so that's where we got the, the point of this lecture is to be able to use this knowledge now to create predictions about relationships uh, that will be, be used in genetics. So let's talk about that. Now, before we can actually do that, reproduction of, in flowering plants happens with the connections between an ovary and a sex cell that's in, in, inside uh, a flowing or traveling uh, pollen. Now the ovary of the cell is in the bottom of the petal, of the, those petals and the pollen actually has to go inside that pistil, almost analogous to the, the vagina, and then go all the way inside, analogous to the uterus, where the, you would find the, the uh, actual uh, ovary and the cell that the ovary makes. Now the, the, this uh, egg is produced by something called stamen, which is a structure that is, stretches from petals as well. Now, it's interesting that uh, pea plants and some, a lot of flowering plants, actually have the, the both genders in the same flower. Now, sometimes the flower only has the, the pistil in it or the stomach in it. But sometimes the flower will have the, the pistil in it and the stomach in it. And sometimes the plant will have some flowers with pistils in it and some flowers with stomachs in it. But some flowers actually have both in the same flower. And that's actually very common for flowering plants. Um, now, flowers which are incapable of having both genders in the same one, that means that the whole tree is only capable of doing one, or one each, it, it, the, each flower is only capable of one gender. And that, in that case, all it can do is cross-federalize or exchange between flowers the genetic code. However, if the flower has both genders in it, it can do something called self-fertilization. Why is that important? Because that's what Mendel used to create, start his experiments. Now, as we talked about, Mendel figured out that there was a particle that, that combined and tossed one from one, one from that to make you who you are. And he also figured out that the solution for his problem with flowers that we talked about a couple of videos ago is that there are two ways of looking dominant. And once he figured that out, and he figured out there was two sets of genes, and there was two ways of looking dominant, he understood his problem with flowers. But then he saw a problem. In order to do what I want to do and actually understand how all this works, I need to create a flower that is pure, that is not a hybrid, and not a heterozygous. How do I do that? Well, he used the process of self-fertilization. Basically, what he did is he crossed the flower with itself many times in order to actually guarantee that that flower was, was a pure breed flower. How do you do that? Now, what he actually did is that he got the flower and he cut all the male parts out of the flower. And then he left the male, the, 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 cut the female part out of another flower. Or he covered that flower to make sh sh and then and then he covered both flowers to make sure that none of the male was going to the female and vice versa. So in one flower, he just left just the carpal, which is that piece that has the ovaries and the, the, the pistil. And then on the other flower, he left the stamens. Now what he would do then is he would pick up the pollen manually with the, with the little um, tool and transfer the pollen manually into the carpal of another flower that was before then covered, protected, and so that it wouldn't be pollinized. And that way he made sure it was that pollen that pollinized that flower. And that that pollen did not come from that flower because the stamens were cut in that flower. And that way he made sure that the plants could only self-pollinize. Now what that does is that if the plants self-pollinize in 100% of the time, even if you do this a billion times, every time the cell makes exactly the same thing, unless there's a mutation. We are talking about a purebred flower. A true breeding flower is a flower that no matter how many tries you try, as long as a no mutation happens, it will always make a copy of itself by self-fertilization. That's where he started his experiments with. So the first thing he did is he self-crossed flowers until he found flowers that can only make more flowers like themselves. And that's where he started his thing. And so what that's what we call a pure breeding cross. When you cross the flower with itself, and you always make a copy of itself. Now, 
the process you set up to, to, to understand how to do this right. You always list the character that you're working on on the top. Then you list the different alleles or the different versions for the genes for that, for that character and the traits that the, the, those, those characters generate. Then you list the possible combinations of those alleles, therefore the genotypes, and what the phenotypes can possibly be. And then you also list what you are crossing, which flower versus which flower, and the, or which, which organism versus whatever organism. And then you also say, then you do meiosis and you segregate those alleles which those flowers have, set up the Punnett square, and solve it. Now, when you're solving it, you're looking for the following characteristics. You're looking for the genotypes that show up in the kid, kids, how often those genotypes show up, which we call the genotype ratio, what phenotypes show up in the kids, and how often do those phenotypes show up in the kids, or the offspring, or the progeny. So, or the phenotype ratio. All right? And this is what we're going to be doing throughout all the crosses that we're going to be working on on the next video. So make sure that you understand how to s this basic template, which you're going to be using for all the classes we're doing on the next video. See you then.